Hello, everyone, and thanks so much for joining our webinar today on creating spooky photos in PaintShop Pro. Today, I'm with PaintShop professional Brad Barton, who is a master at creating dramatic and mysterious scenes, and he will teach you how to take regular photographs and give, and give them an eerie treatment using PaintShop Pro tools. Before I pass it over to Brad, uh, as a special thank you for your attendance today, I wanted to offer you an exclusive 40% off any script or script bundle from within the product welcome book. The code to redeem this offer and a link to watch the recording of this webinar will be sent to you in a follow-up email you'll receive tomorrow. So make sure to keep an eye out for that. Now I'll pass it over to Brad. Hello, thank you. Um, I'm gonna start off by telling telling you what I just told her. My uh, my allergies are kicking in right now, so if I have a moment that I have to cough or something, I'll mute myself so you don't have to listen to that part. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and dive straight in. We're gonna uh, edit a few different images here. I've got a couple different techniques we can use to uh, make your images a little more spooky for, for Halloween. Uh, we're gonna talk a lot about layers and, and how to do the blending modes to make things happen, and we'll do a little bit of masking as well while we're doing this. We're going to start with a fairly simple one here. This this one of Robert. This is an actor that I have photographed a couple of times. And uh, I, the more I've looked at this image, the more I've realized there's one more thing I wanted to change on it. So we're going to do that as one of our first steps. But anybody who knows me knows one of the first things I ever do is I'll crop this down to uh, essentially an 8 by 10 uh, ratio. I use the crop tool to do that. And right in here, you'll have the ability to set that to be your eight by 10 ratio. And the reason I do that is because if I go then later and post this on Instagram, it'll allow me to, to post the full image. If it's that four by six that comes out of the camera, it won't let me do that. So the first tool I'm gonna show you, and this is this was not in the final image that was sent off to, to Corel to promote this, is these white lines right here that are on his jacket are bothering me because they they just kind of, cross at weird angles so there's a great tool in here in paintshop pro on it's on the clone menu it's called scratch remover and what it does is creates this box and you see here I've, I've outlined where the white line is the line the spaces that are between the middle piece it's going to take the colors that are in those lines and interpret it to erase anything that's in the middle. This is originally done so when you're doing a restore of a photograph, it'll erase uh, scratches that might be on, a, on an old photograph, but it can also be great for doing exactly what I'm doing right here. It can also you be used to remove uh, stray hairs. If you've got uh, flyaway hairs on, on, a, on a portrait that you've done of somebody, uh, it's, it's, it's just a great all around tool. I, I use it for a lot of different things. And we're just gonna come in here real quick and try to erase as much of these white lines as we can. It's not always perfect on its first try, especially if there's a lot of other colors mixed in, uh, but it'll do a pretty good job. It should do a pretty good job right across here, and that didn't do it right there. But it can do a good job across other things that are happening. I'll show you here. I'll just, if it's got this cross line that's right here, it should, no, nope, it didn't do it that time. I'm I'm not I'm not doing it right. That's my problem here. Anyway, I'm gonna do it in short strokes so it'll so it'll go faster. I'm gonna take these light lines out. This one doesn't look right, so we're just gonna take a clone brush to it. It's too close to the fence parts for me to do what I want to do right there. So we're just gonna take a clone brush. I'm gonna copy from right there and do it right in here. The idea is this tool is supposed to be faster than just using a clone brush to do this, but it's not uh, it's sometimes dependent on what else is going on in the image. So we're gonna erase this one. And right there. All right, I think that's most of them. Now there's a couple more lines here. I'm gonna take this one out. And we're gonna take this one out. Go right there. I have to use a clone brush to get the rest of that one in there. Actually, I'm going to leave that one down there like it is. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with those. All right. Now, the first thing we want to do is, the first thing we want to do with him is we need his eyes to be a little creepier. So what we're going to do with his eyes 
is I'm going to uh, duplicate a layer. So now I've got a, dupli a duplicate copy of the of the original image on top of on top of the uh, other image, on top of the original. So I'm gonna turn that top layer off by, by clicking the eyeball here and go back to that original layer. And in here, I'm going to come in and I'm going to just enhance those eyes. I'm gonna do that first with a sharpen, sharpen, sharpness, high pass sharpen. And it's a fairly subtle sharpen. It's just a radius of 10 and strength of 70 on soft light. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna also increase the brightness on these, and I'm gonna use the curves tool to do that, brightness and contrast on the eyes. Reset that to defaults. That's what this button here, here does. It re resets it all back to the default settings. And I wanna brighten up the eyes a little bit. Now, right now it's, it's brightening the entire image because I haven't isolated just the eyes yet, but I'm just looking at what it's doing to the eyes. So I'm, darkening down the dark areas and I'm increasing the brightness in the light areas with this curve. And now if I turn back on my top layer, it goes back to the original, but I can take my eraser brush and I've got a very soft hard, uh, soft hardness, soft edge on the, on the brush. Take my eraser brush and erase out where those eye where the eyes were on the, I'm on the wrong layer, that's why it's not working. Go to this top layer, I'm gonna erase this part of the eye so it shows through that brightness and contrast that I did in the bottom layer, just to make his eyes a little brighter, a little spookier. I think I want his eyes actually a little bit brighter than this. So we're gonna go back to that bottom layer again, run my curves adjustment one more time. This time it'll only change the eyes. That's a little too much, so we're going to come down right about there. Bring this one up. Perfect. All right. So now it is, uh, that's the difference in these eyes, uh, in the eyes adjustment. Then we're going to uh, come in and do a curves adjustment on the entire image. I'm going to flatten the image. This merges everything down. And find my curves again. Brightness and contrast, curves. Oops, whoa, that was the wrong button to hit. Uh, I wanna brighten up the darks just a little bit so we can get more detail out of the jacket. Later on in the same image, that's gonna end up darkening it down again just a little bit. Now I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna add in some smoke effect to this. And this is where one of the places where we're gonna show uh, some of the blending of the layer of layers. I'm gonna bring in this image of smoke and this is just was a fog against a black background, a fog from a fog machine off of a black background that I photographed several years ago in my studio. We're gonna copy this image as it is. I'm gonna paste it in as a new layer. And that's why I've got this button set to be paste as new layer. So you can see here, it's popped in over the top of it as a new layer entirely. Let's stretch it out to the edges so it covers the whole image. Actually, I'm gonna move it down a little bit as well. I want it to come in from this side. I'm gonna angle it a little bit as well. Now this is one of the layer the layer uh, blending modes I was gonna talk about. And I'm gonna change this blending mode to screen. And what screen does is the darker, the darker part, the darkest part of the layer become more transparent. The darker it is, the more transparent it is, the lighter it is, the more, the less transparent it is. So that by changing this to screen, all the black will go away and the smoke shows through. It's still gonna be kind of weird around the edges because this black wasn't completely black at the edges. So I'm gonna create a new mask layer of show all. And now everything from that smoke layer is still showing through, but I'm gonna take a black brush and everywhere I paint black, if I painted black through the middle of this, it would erase all that part, but I don't wanna erase that part. I just wanna erase around those edges of where that smoke was. And I'm doing it with a, with a no, I'm not doing it with a soft edge. I'm doing it with a soft edge now, doing it with a soft edge 
And you see right here, you can see, if you can just see it, there's just this weird little line of edge of the original smoke image. And just by taking a soft edge brush to that, I'm just gonna be making that edge softer so that it doesn't stand out in the final image. Smoke's a little brighter than I want it to be, so I'm clicking on this layer again, or a little heavier than I want it to be, so I'm clicking on that edge again, and I'm gonna drop this, the uh, opacity of that layer down so it show, the background shows through just a little more. Now I'm going to merge that all together again, and I'm going to make a copy of that, what I'm seeing to my clipboard so that I can then paste it in again later. Could I add some texture to this image next? And again, I've got a couple texture things here. This one's just a, a, a grainy texture. It's got a little bit of a vignette on the texture as well. So it, it'll add that vignette to me or to my, to what I'm doing. As I go along. So we're gonna copy that also. We're pasting it over the top of this image as a new layer. I'm gonna rotate it and stretch out the sides. So that it covers the whole image. Now this one I'm actually gonna leave exactly like it is for just a moment, but I'm gonna turn it off again so I can see my bottom layer. Now I'm copying what I can see which is which is mostly just the background image at this point. I'm gonna turn that texture layer back on again, and I'm gonna paste that over the top of it. Now I'm going to come into this and change this to black and white using the channel mixer. And then I'm going to adjust the, uh, shadows if i can find the place on the menu here it is highlight and tone shadow what i want to do with this with this layer is i want to bring the shadows up to 100 and leave the other two where they are and this is all this is just to bring some more detail back out of the shadows again now that looks terrible what we're going to do with this is we're changing this to soft light so now that texture is bleeding through we're going to paste in our original image again and we're going to do the same thing we're going to make it black and white I'm gonna change that blending layer to soft light before without doing anything else to it. Now a little more of our details from our original image are coming through. I'm gonna paste it again. This time we're gonna leave it in color. And we're gonna change this to soft light again. Now we have a little more color to our image. And then one last time we're gonna paint in, or we're gonna paste in our regular layer, our original layer. And this time we're going to mask, oops, I did the wrong mask. Didn't intend to do it as a white mask. I'm gonna mask that layer out completely. So it hides everything in that top image, in that top layer. It's gonna hide everything in that top layer by making it black, making it all black. So now you can't see this at all. And I'm gonna take a white paintbrush with a little bit less opacity so it doesn't do it at 100%. I'm gonna paint back in using the white to show through that original image to give me just a little more detail where I want it to be from my original image. All through the smoke here. And what that process did was desaturate our image a little bit so it doesn't look, it doesn't look like just a shot out in the park. It's now got a little bit of saturation uh, a little bit of desaturation going to the whole to the overall image. I'm going to merge all this together, and then we're going to do for a final touch. We're going to use uh, Corel's that it's built into PaintShop Pro. It's got a vignette feature, and I just need to find it. It's on the effects menu, I believe, and it is on the lighting menu. The reason I can't always find these things right away is because I'll oh it's on photo effects. Um, it's effects, photo effects, vignette. The reason I can't find them all, all right away all the time on, on when I'm doing these tools 
is because I've got actions that do all these things for me automatically. I've created over the years, so I've forgotten where they are in the menu. And we're going to change the size of the vignette. I want to center it around him a little bit. And what this is doing is it's darkening the out, outer layers and, and keeping the same brightness of, of what's inside the circle. Uh, I'm going to change the darkness on that outer edge. So it's a little brighter, so it's not quite so dark. And we're going to call that good. And it just adds that vignette. So then I would call that image done. That was one of our that was one of our simple images to do. Now similarly, what we talked about with when we talked about doing the smoke here, you can do the same thing using that screen mode to add fire to your images. Let me get rid of these a couple images off my screen here. Save myself some memory so this will run faster. And we're gonna use, we're gonna add some fire to this uh, clown image right here. Let these load up. I may have asked my computer to do too much by loading up three at a time, but that's all right. It'll be it'll be fast enough for what we're doing here. Perfect. All right. So before we get to the fire, the first thing I want to do is this background's kind of ugly. Actually, the first thing I want to do is do the crop. We've already talked about how I crop everything to begin with. All right, this is going to be a vertical crop though this time instead of a horizontal crop, and I can change my crop tool. I can rotate my crop rotate my crop tool by hitting this button right here. Now it's still stuck in an eight, in a eight, eight by ten ratio. So no matter which part of this I tug on, it'll keep the same eight by ten ratio. I want to grow it so it's big enough for the whole image. Let's slide it this way. I want to crop out most of his shoulder right there. Leave myself some space on that side. All right, now the first thing I want to do is change this background because it's pretty ugly the way it is. We're going to use, we're going to use this orangish background for his. I'm going to paste in that orange background over the top of him. Rotate it so it fits in into the space. Expand it so it fills my image. I'm going to change that. I'm going to experiment with the blending modes until I find one I like. I'm just looking at how it's hitting the background. Oh, okay, overlay work is going to work perfectly. That's that's great for adding to my background. But it's also on his face, so I don't really want it on his face. So I'm going to have to mask it off of his face. We'll do that again by doing a, a new mask layer, show all, changing to a black brush, changing to a black brush that is fully opaque. And we're just going to come in here, we're going to paint it off of the areas where I don't want that orange background to be shining through. Now we are going to add some orange back to his face again because we're going to put fire in his hand. I think I'm probably going to leave the orange on his hand just to shorten that step for me in a minute. I don't mind having a little bit of that orange bleeding over onto his shoulder, it just adds to the effect. Let's leave it on his hand. Actually, let's just lighten it off his hand. I'm going to change my opacity down so that it's not quite as strong on the hand, but it still has that orange feel to it on his hand. All right, now we're going to go get the fire. The same way we did with the smoke, we're copying it to the clipboard. We're going to paste it over the top of the image. I put it in the wrong spot, so I'm going to have to drag it up to here. Again, we can change the blending mode to screen. And now I'll get my pick tool and resize the fire. I want it much smaller in his hand to put it where I want it to be. And I'm not going to use all the fire. I'm going to I'm going to mask it again to get it out of the get it get out the parts that I don't want. So I'm just looking at this center column of flame here of where I'm going to put it in his hand. Particle shop ad pops up. That's all right. We'll just dismiss it. Particle shop's a pretty cool little program too. I don't use it a lot, but it is it is a pretty cool product. I'm going to change there. I'm going to change my layer. So it, when if I change away from that layer and then come back to it, what that did will be to change my box. 
because I want to shrink it down this way just a little bit. And take it a little higher. All right, now we're going to mask it. New mask layer, show all. And I'm going to take that black brush again and erase where I don't want the fire to be, which in this case is going to be all through here. I still got a 25%. Let me turn it up to 100. I don't want any of this fire. I don't want any of my edges from the from the original image. I definitely don't want it below his hand. I just want it in his hand and spilling through his fingers. So we're going to do the spilling through the fingers here in a second as well. But we're going to take off the edge first. That hard edge looked looks bad in my original image. And I want to erase right here as well. All right, we're going to zoom in on his hand so we can see what we have to work with on his hand. Erase this here. I'm going to erase it right here on his finger, right here in his fingers. And the good thing about doing this with a mask is anytime I met if I if I do it wrong, I can always switch back to white and bring it back. But I'm gonna use I'm gonna use the black to take it off of where I don't want it to be. Well it looks like his hands are somewhat fireproof here. Get off the nails and paint white right there. I'm using the right, the right click on the mouse to paint the white back in because that's the other color that's here. A little bit off of right here as well. Anyway, you get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. Now we've just added that to his to his hand. And then one more time, I'm gonna take I want to take a, a, a color picker tool. I want to grab this orange color from the flames, one of these orange colors in here, find the one I want, probably right about there. Now, the same way we have blending layers on our layers, we also have blending layers for our paint brushes. I've got a, right now I've got an orange paintbrush, and I'm going to change its blending layer to soft light also. And then I'm going to come up here to his face. Oops, I'm in the wrong spot. I want to create a new... I want to create a new layer to do this, actually. Let me do this differently. Create a new layer to do this. And I'm going to paint with that. No, I'm not going to paint with that. I'm Because it's in a layer all by itself, the soft light doesn't know what to do. So it's it's not doing, it's not, uh, it's not doing a soft light effect on the background image. It was doing a soft light effect on nothing at all. So it was coming out the same color. So I've changed that back to a normal paintbrush. We're going to change this layer to soft light instead. So now as I paint in, it'll paint that orange glow back onto his face. And I'm being real messy about it, but I'm going to fix that up here with a slightly lower opacity. Actually, I've got it 100%. That's right. I'm going to go to the eraser brush with a lower opacity. And I'm going to take it back off of this edge of the face because the light would fall off by the time I got to this part of his face. And then we've just added flames to his hand. So that's a pretty good little simple effect if you want to try and add in fire or smoke to those things. Now we're going to do another background swap on the next image. And I'm going to show you a little bit of how to use a warp tool to make a vampire. Miss Becca here wanted to be a vampire, so we're going to turn, we're going to make her be a vampire. And we're going to use this background over here. Now, vampires generally have a lot of things going for them, including, you know, wonderfully perfect skin, which us as people don't always have. 
especially when we haven't gotten enough sleep at night. And one of the things that, that Miss Becca here had was some bags under her eyes. So we're gonna solve that first and we're gonna do that with a push brush. And this is just a simple push brush. The opacity is set at 30, steps at 10. I believe this is even the default for the push brush. And I'm just gonna come in here and very lightly, I'm gonna click in short, click and click, yeah, click and drag in short movements to just push some color around on her face to get those bags to disappear just a little bit. Take some of the blemishes off her nose that way as well. And we're gonna smooth and soften out the makeup as well. Now I could do this for the whole face as well to soften up any skin pores, that sort of thing. It's, it's a pretty good tool for using, for doing that. Um, if you don't like the effect it gives, you can also do this in a, in a duplicate layer above and then change the opacity down so that you don't have, uh, you don't lose, so you don't lose pores, but you still can correct the blemishes, any blemishes you want to do. So we're just doing quick, quick and easy, soften up the skin around here a little bit. All right. There's her nose. All right. That's great. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to, we're going to enhance her eyes. And this time I'm going to show you a little bit different way of doing it. I'm still going to go down to this bottom layer. I'm going to change the sharpening effect on that bottom layer, but I'm not going to brighten it because these are already pretty bright eyes on hers. We're changing the high pass sharpen, same settings we had before. And then back up to the top layer with that eraser brush on full opacity because I did change it down a little bit ago. But this time I'm only going to go in, I'm going to change the opacity. I'm only going to erase, erase the colored part of her eye to just bring out a little more detail in her eyes. Just adds a little bit more sparkle to her eyes. Now to create a fang for her, Great fangs for her. We're going to change these two teeth to fangs. And we're going to do that with a warp brush. But before we use the warp brush on it to do it, merge that together. Before we use the warp brush to do that, I'm going to isolate those two teeth. And I'm going to isolate those two teeth using the Smart Edge selection tool. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to click along the edge. It's going to find the edges of the tooth for me so I don't have to be super precise in my measurement I just have to get it inside the box oops I've got a huge feather on from a previous project all right let's do that again there's one it's set to add add so now it's going to add to the selection this tooth And now I'm going to come over to the to my layers palette. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say promote selection to layer. And what that did was now the whatever was selected, which was just these two teeth, are now in their own layer entirely. So if I turn off the visibility of that top layer, all you'll see is the teeth. And the reason I do this is now for this layer, the teeth are the only things in this layer. I can take the warp brush, and it'll only affect. I could stretch things or do whatever I want to down here, it's not gonna affect that part of the image because there is no image down there. But I can come up here and I can use that same warp tool to stretch and point these two teeth without affecting any of the other teeth around them and without affecting the tongue. So we're just gonna give her a little bit of a point on the teeth. And we'll have our own little what we do in the shadows. Great show if you've never watched it. What we do in the shadows kind of effect for her vampire teeth here. And now those those are completely in their own layer. So I can turn them on and off at will if I wanted to as well, if I don't like the effect or whatever. 
All right, again, we're going to come in here. We're going to crop her for 8 by 10. I need to rotate my crop tool again because I still rotated from the last one. Crop right by 10. I want to do a background replacement. As you notice, you may have noticed I brought in this image that came from one of my one of the stock sites I use. We're going to paste it in over the top of all that. Just going to use it so it fills in those parts. Actually, I want to use it bigger than that. Let's pick it up bigger than that. And this time we're going to uh, use overlay as well again. But this time I'm going to do a hide all. And I'll paint back in where I want the background to be instead of painting instead of painting it out off of her. We're just going to paint in over here off the top of her edge. It's okay if it bleeds a little bit into her hair because it normally would. It's also a little too much detail in that background, so I'm going to go in here and do a Gaussian blur on it as well so that it's not quite so prominent. Blur, Gaussian blur. Uh, 100 is probably too intense. So we're just going to change it down to probably about 10 here. Now this time, oops, sorry, I've got a timer going off in the background. This time I'm going to use an adjustment layer. Now this is the same as other kinds of layers, except what it's doing is just doing an adjustment of the image that's uh, the image that's underneath it as a layer on its own, which you could then mask and use other things for. It's a very powerful thing to do. And what I want to do here is I want to create a light fall off so that there's more light on this side of her face than there is on the camera left side of her face. So I'm going to do that by turning, by making it darker. I'm dragging, dragging in the middle here to make it a little darker overall. Not too much. Let's bring it back up. Right about there. And now, since this is a since this is an adjustment layer, I can come in here with a black paintbrush and paint back out again where I don't want that change to have happened. I'm just going to make it a little sweep here across to change, just changing the lighting on her face just a little bit. And still dark on this side of her face, darker on this side of her face. Just adds a little more dramatic lighting to it. And dramatic lighting is what Halloween and what the spooky images are all about, is having that drama to things. All right. Now, as before, I'm going to, oops, I've already closed that window. I'm going to bring it back in here. I'm going to bring that same texture in that we did with that first image. We're going to we're going to add some texture to it. We're going to do it a little differently for, for uh, her image, though. Uh, come on. Sorry about this. My computer is slowing down. I tried to clear off some space on my on my computer last night to do uh, get some additional memory into the system, but hard drive fills up when you got a lot of work to do. All right. I'm pasting that back in there. Uh, turn it around. Stretch it so it fills up the entire image.
we're going to turn the visibility of that layer off again so that we can copy everything that's below it. And I've got this button here set to copy special, which is the same thing as if I went to the copy menu and did copy, copy special, copy merged. So what that's doing is it's copying everything that's visible to the clipboard as a single image, which I'm then gonna paste back in as a new layer. I'm going to change that to black and white. I need to turn the visibility of that texture layer back on. Adjust channel mixer, black and white. We're gonna do that highlight midtone shadows. One again, it's also on the adjust menu. Brightness and contrast, highlight midtone shadow to bring the shadows up to 100%. Just brings out all those details down here in the shadows. That's the only part that really matters for this step. Changing that blend mode to soft light. Gonna do it again. Only not do the highlight mid-tone shadows in this step. And you can create yourself an action to do this. And maybe uh, as a side note to Carly, maybe that's uh, something for a future webinar with me or someone else is creating your own actions. Because the actions tools are very, very powerful in, in, in PaintShop Pro. Change that to soft light. Actually, I actually have a button that does all this right here. It's this button. It No, it's not that button. One of these buttons up here. Anyway, it does already does it. I've already got it tuned to something, but it's easier for everyone watching right now to go through the steps one by one. I'm gonna paste it in as a color layer. We're gonna change that blending loan to soft light also. And then for the top one, the one that we did details and we did the masking on before, I'm going to just paste it in over the top. And then I'm going to just use the opacity slider to adjust it to where I want it to be to taste which is gonna be probably somewhere around 45% or so, maybe a little more. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little more color back into that. So let's get it back up to about 50, how about 57? 57 sounds like a good number. All right, now, since she's a vampire, we don't really wanna have all this texture in her face showing through from that texture layer down below. So we're gonna go down to that texture layer down below. And I'm gonna take this, lasso tool again, only this time I'm changing it to point to point, replace. But this time I want that ginormous feather on there that I had a minute ago. And all I'm gonna do is come in here and I'm going to select the areas of skin that I don't want the texture to be on. Now, if I just deleted this, it would lose any color that it's also picking up from that texture. So instead, I'm gonna go back to Gaussian blur again as soon as it catches up with me. I'll go back to Gaussian Blur again, adjust, blur, Gaussian Blur. And this time we're gonna blur that to, the blur the texture layer to 100%. So now it's retaining the color and the contrasts from that texture layer, but by blurring it at 100, it's, get, it's losing all the texture in the section that's been highlighted. It has a feather so that, that that blur falls off until it gets to the full texture that's out here outside that selection. You zoom in now, you can see how the texture has gone off her face, but as soon as it hits the edge of her face and under the hair, the texture starts coming back until it's back completely over here outside the selection. Right click to turn off the selection. Gonna merge the whole thing, and we're gonna add another vignette again like we did before. Add another vignette, photo effects, vignette. I'm gonna take it over here. I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit more. I want to, I want the light to fall off more on this side of our face. So we're, we're shrinking it down just a little bit. Clicking okay. And calling it good right there. So we now have a vampire. And then lastly, Halloween's all about the little kids, right? So we're gonna throw in a lot of these things that we've already that we've already discussed, a lot of the things we've already learned with all these other ones. 
and we're going to take this little Indiana Jones guy and put him on top of that uh, temple that I found in Cozumel. And load up this golder texture as well. This is just a gold version of that monochrome texture we were using for the other two. All right, now the first thing we're going to do is do a crop, but I don't need all that much image of, the, don't need that much of this image for the crop. We're going to go about here. I'm still in that 8 by 10 ratio though, so I'm going, I don't have to worry anything about any of that part. Not worried about that little bit of extra at the top. I will deal with it in a different way. I will show you how to deal with that as well. All right, so I'm going to use that. Now I'm going to take my selection tool again. It's this time a selection of a rectangle. And I'm going to select in up above where the whip is. Oops, I'm still in that feather mode. Turn my turn that feather off. Right click to get rid of what I did. And then just selecting a little bit here. And while all I'm doing here is I'm selecting what is gray. I'm going to take my pick tool. I haven't done anything else yet. I'm going to take my pick tool. I'm going to click right here, and what that just did was promote that selection to a layer, and now I can click and drag that selection up to the top of the image. It makes all that go away. I'm going to take my temple, paste in back in here, I'm going to put the temple, though, below him because it's going to make my life a little easier to, to put it below him. But I want to expand it so it's big enough to fill the whole image. So we're going to take it and we're going to drag. By dragging from the corners, you keep the crop ratio the way, the way it's supposed to be. Or keep the perspective the way it's supposed to be. I'm going to do this a little differently. Let me... I'm not... Change my mind how I'm going to do this. I'm going to put that, put my background layer on top. All right, I'm going to change that to multiply. Now I can kind of see my guy behind him. Turn it down a little bit so I can see that, that guy a little bit better. We're going to do a layers. Show all on this. So I got ahead of myself. I don't want that multiply. I want it to be screen. That's why I'm not, that's why it's not looking right. Got ahead of myself. Sorry. We're going to do multiply in a minute for that same layer. Screen screen means I'll be able to see it better because it's just showing, it's just showing through the uh, brightest portions on screen. And now with this mask layer, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to erase where I want it to be. Actually, I'm going to, I want to place the temple where I want it to be first. I want the temple to be under his feet. I click that and drag it. Let me grab hold of the handle. And drag it right over here so that this stair right here is under his feet. Now the stair is not perfectly under his feet. Lost my handle. Where'd my handle go? The stair is not perfectly under his feet. So I'm going to take the warp tool on this layer again. And I'm just going to warp the image a little bit so that the stair is a little more under his feet where I want it to be. Warp tool is best if you make short movements with it. Don't take it and do a huge drag because you'll get something that looks like that. But with short movements, you can make it work. All right. Accept the warp. I come back into my mask layer. And we want to paint it off of him. So we're going to paint black in over the top of him so that he shows through better. So 
some blading through on the edges is okay. Because when you're in real life, you get some in, some feel of that anyway, because the light wraps around objects just a little bit uh, in vision and in camera. This is all his shirt right here. Paint it off of his shoulder. Oops, I painted a little bit too far. So we're using black to paint back in by clicking on the right button. His opposite shoulder and his arm. The whip will be the biggest challenge, of course. Back up here, the ear, his great little hat. Back in black there, paint back in white there. And now we're going to shrink down this brush size and try to trace along the whip as much as possible. It's not going to be perfect for speed reasons right here. We're just tasting along the whip. If this were a straight line whip, it would, or straight, the whip were in a straight line, that would make it so much easier. I could use a, a shift and click to drag, a, to make a straight line with the paintbrush, but I don't have that. Uh, luxury with this whip. All right, that looks pretty good. We're going to leave it like that. All right, now we've got that one set to screen. We're going to duplicate that entire mask, mask and all layer. And it duplicates the layer mode, the layer blending mode as well, but we're changing the layer blending mode to multiply of the second one. Now that's starting to come through a little more. It's a little dark, doesn't quite match him exactly. There's places where I missed on his legs here that's showing now because of the multiply layer. So we'll come back in here and we'll refine our mask just a little bit on the multiply layer. But just on the multiply layer, we're, we're refining the mask a little bit. So, it doesn't, so that gray background doesn't bleed through. Right there, there's a little bit right here by his hand that's showing through now that wasn't showing through as much on the screen layer. A little bit right here next to his arm. Again, for interest of time, I'm not going to go through and make this absolutely perfect, but you get the idea of what we're trying to do here. Right here, right here, and right here on his ear. Lost his ear. Going to go refine it a little bit on the screen layer as well for that one for his ear. All right. Now, I want to add some smoke in there again. I didn't bring the smoke layer over, so let's add the smoke back in. And smoke is great for a lot of things when you're trying to do an image like this one because it can help hide any errors you might have down around his feet. Click on the smoke, bring the smoke back. Come on. And add some of that smoke in down here around his feet. Oops, I've got it on the wrong layer, so let me bring it, let me bring it up above all the other layers so it's on top. Change it to screen so the smoke shows through, but not the black. I'm going to use an image reverse here too, because I want it to come in from the left side. So we're going to mirror it horizontal. And that just reversed that layer. Bring it down here.
So you know, it kind of looks like it's climbing the stairs a little bit. I'll bring one more layer in. I said this one's a little more complicated. This one's going to be a little more detailed. And I haven't done this yet on any of their images. We're going to just bring in this, this mottled gray background. And we're going to use this to uh, add some additional shading to the image. Copy that layer. Paste in it over the top. I'm going to close some of these other windows down and get some speed back on my editing here. Part of it is with the GoToMeeting running in the background is also uh, putting a demand on my computer. PaintShop Pro itself does not normally run slow on my machine. Okay, we're going to take this, we're going to fill the whole image with it. So we're going to take it and we're going to stretch it out. And this is a fun way to change the lighting of your image just a little bit and add a little more of a spooky effect to the whole thing. Stretch it out here. I'm going to change this blending mode to multiply. Do a layers show all. And now with a white brush, or black brush, sorry, with a black brush, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paint out where I don't want that to be showing through because it'll bring some light back in, but I don't want to do it at 100%. We're going to do it at 20 opacity. So basically we're just going to add in a little bit of light. I'm using short, short clicks, short lines. I'm bringing the light back up on him a little bit. I'm going to bring it back in from this top side down here with a big brush. And this will help change the light blending just a little bit. Got ahead of it, so it's catching up what I was just doing. Here we go. Change a little down here, get a little more light on the side of his face, a little more light on the side of his body. A little more on his face. A little less right there. All right. This top corner bugs me, so we're going to add a new layer. I'm just going to add in. It's too bright for what I want it for what I want it to look like in the end. So I'm going to paint it all black up here for a moment. So it's still at 20%. Let's do it at 100% so you can see what I'm doing. Paint it all black. Again, I've got a soft edge on it, so it's just giving me a, a little bit of a blurred edge doing this. Could have highlighted it and done a fill also if I wanted to, but I didn't do it that way. Starting to run short on time, so I'm gonna just use this button right here, which I've got linked to Gaussian Blur to blur that layer. And then I'm gonna set the opacity way down, just enough to darken that corner for us. So it looks more like we're in, in nighttime scene than it is a daytime scene, is all that was for. Let's merge this all together. And then we're going to do one more thing for this image. I'm going to come in here. I want to do what what in in, in uh, cinematography terms is called a uh, color grade. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to, I duplicate I flatten it all and then I duplicated the layer. Now in this top layer I'm going to come in here to uh, it's on effects film and filters and I'm just going to straight up Go to the one of the presets called Night Effect. 
And what this does is it creates this blue cast on the entire image. I don't want the blue cast on him though. So again, we're gonna mask that out. So the blue cast is not as strong on him. We don't want him to look like he's died. So it just gives us a little bit warmer feel for his image. A little extreme, so we're gonna change the opacity of that whole layer down a little bit. So it's just a slight effect of color. So it went from that to that. And then we can do the same things we did with the other with the other images where we can add in the extra texture by doing the multiple layers thing and, and vignette the whole image when it's when it's on a final. But I think I think we're out of time at the moment. Are aren't we, Carly? Yes, unfortunately we are. Yeah, so I think we're just going to call that good right now. There's still more you can do with it. Uh, I can show you what a final version of this looked like, including using some other plugins. And PaintShop Pro does use plugins as well. Any Photoshop plugin it can use as well. I'll show you what the final image looked like as I delivered it to that client was this. It's a PSP image, so it might take a little bit long to load. So go ahead and speak anything else you need to do, Carly, while this thing loads up. Okay, sure. Well, thank you so much for that excellent presentation, Brad. And thanks so much to everyone who attended today. Just a the quick reminder to watch out for a follow-up email tomorrow that you'll receive, which will include a link to watch a recording of this presentation, um, as well as a coupon code to redeem 40% off scripts or script bundles from within your product welcome book. Uh, so thanks so much, everyone, and uh, I guess we'll see the, the final result of this image here, Brad, and then we'll close out. Yep, there we go. That's that's what I delivered to the client. Now, this included some extra plugins from, from other companies we're not talking about today, but uh, it is one of the big powers of, of PaintShop Pro that you can use uh, Photoshop plugins as additional effects and features. Perfect. Okay, thanks so much, everyone. Uh, have a great day. See you next time.